So the first wave of the booster course pass just dropped last Friday. Now that I've pay played all the tracks, both online and offline, I wanted to give my own opinion of the DLC. So let's just get straight into it. First of all, my overall opinion of the DLC is it, it it's really fun. It's really great. The it's great that we got new tracks to play on, even if the graphics aren't quite up to par with the regular tracks. I mean, I personally don't really care that much about the textures, but I mean, at the same time, I kind of understand why people would be so upset about it. I mean, the game's 10 years old, and they have great textures on all the old courses. Why do courses that we have to pay extra for look worse in the base game? Now again, I don't really care that much about the textures because it doesn't exactly take away from the fun of them. <clears throat> I just think it's weird at all. I mean, they could have at least copied and pasted the textures from other tracks onto them. Like, especially the grass and sand. It's mainly the foliage that looks bad, though. It's, like, the regular textures on buildings and such don't look so bad. It's just mainly the foliage, like grass, sand, and bushes. But aside from that, my only major complaint is the lack of anti-gravity. Sure, some people don't like that feature, and I guess that's their problem, but I mean, it's literally the main gimmick of Mario Kart 8. I mean, it's not a huge deal, but it's just strange that they decided not to include anti-gravity in a game where that's the main gimmick. But still, even then, the tracks are really fun to race on. The music is all really good, and I'm really glad they put effort into that. I do want to briefly review each track individually, so let me go ahead and do that. So first of all, we got Paris Promenade. 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 How are the hell you pronounce that? The track is quite simple. I mean, at least it is at first. And for a tour track, this actually does look really good. And aside from the foliage textures, this one looks like it could have easily been an original Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 track. I mean, it's kind of flat, so there's not much to do in terms of stunts and all. But when you get to the final lap and you turn around, that that's just really cool. Kind of reminds me of Luigi Circuit from Mario Kart Double Dash, where you're going going backwards each each lap, where half the lap goes one way and the other half goes the other way. But I mean, this one's a little bit different since you're only going backwards on the final lap. And <clears throat> unless you're really good or you come across players that are really bad, you're probably not going to meet anybody going backwards. But I mean, it's still really cool, especially since certain things such as ramps, item boxes, and boost panels also move in order to accommodate for the going in the op opposite direction. I would say the only thing I don't like about this track is that the road is a little too wide. But other than that, this course is incredible. Now Toad Circuit is, is the only track that I just do not like in this first wave. I mean yeah, it's partly because of the textures that make it look like a 7 year old's Play-Doh project, but there are other s aspects that I just don't think are well designed. The actual shortcut with the pipes in the way, I just feel like that's kind of badly designed because of the red and white shoulder right here. It throws you into the air if you hit it. <clears throat> so you have to kind of drive past it, which can be difficult on 200cc. It might not be as big of a problem on 150, but still, it's just really badly positioned. And I wish it wasn't a bump there. But overall, the track is kind of boring otherwise. I mean, yeah, it's the first track of the Mushroom Cup in Mario Kart 7, but still. I will say one thing about this track, though. The music is probably the best in the entire set. It's really great to listen to it. For Chaco Mountain, I don't have a whole lot to say about this track, but it does, it, it is pretty good. I mean, it doesn't look quite like it would have made it into the base game, based on the textures, but I mean they are more detailed than they are in the rest of the DLC. I will say one thing I don't like about this track though, 
is the fact that for some reason they made it so you can't drift out of the glider right before the 180 degree turn around the lake. I don't understand why. I mean, I don't know of any other point in the game where that happens, so I kind of hope they fix it eventually. But, I don't know. Other than that, this track is really good. Coconut Mall is very fun. It looks a lot different than it does in Mario Kart Wii. But I guess you could say that about any other retro track in the game. Although it does look very different, it doesn't really play any different. Aside from the glider ramp on the top path coming out of the mall. Though if I remember right, that also exists in Mario Kart 7. But unlike in Mario Kart 7, you can kind of glide around this quarter, corner, cutting off a small section of the track. I don't know if this is any faster, but it looks cool. Now, I don't really understand why they decided to replace the moving cars at the end with badly placed static ones. I'd rather than not have them at all, at that rate. Of course, it'd be great to have them there. I'd rather have them there than, not ha than having them not there. But it's like, why are they there positioned like that? What's the point? Other than that, the, the course is well designed. Now, I, there is something else I want to say. It's not really a complaint. I just find it weird. Why is it that inside the mall, gravity is so strong on 200cc? I mean, the first time I played it, 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 it just threw me off. I wasn't expecting to land on the ground as soon as I did a stunt. In terms of the track itself, Tokyo Blur is pretty simple, but I really love the idea of each lap being completely different from the one before. At first, I was hoping that each variation of Tokyo Blur from Mario Kart Tour would be randomly selected each time you played the map, kind of like Animal Crossing, where each season is randomly selected when you play it, but this is actually a lot better than that idea, because it gives the track a more unique vibe. That's all I really have to say with this track, other than that, this track is pretty simple and there's not much to say about it, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Shroom Ridge looks really good though, even with the bad textures, it, it's really good looking. A lot of people hate how all the traffic flows in the same direction. But honestly, I couldn't care less. I would say this track is the hardest one in the first wave, especially when you do it on 200cc. But once you master it, it's so fun. This is coming from someone who hates Toad's Turnpike. I think that because of the fact that this track is less simple than Toad's Turnpike, it makes it more fun. That's probably why I like it more, to be honest. And that S turn at the end of the track is like a harder version of the one at the end of Neo Bowser City. While that one is difficult because it's narrow and slippery, the one on Shroom Ridge is harder because you have to dodge the cars that are never in the same spot as before. Out of all the tracks, this and Ninja Hideaway are probably the most fun to play on, and I will always pick them when they appear in rotation online. Now, Sky Garden. This one's interesting. I mean, on the one hand, it's a decent track. It's kind of simple, but it's alright. I don't really hate the track, I don't really like it either. As a track itself, it's not that bad. It's just too short and simple for me. On the other hand, as a remake, it is complete garbage. I mean, if you look at the other GBA tracks, they did a really good job staying faithful to the original design and layout, while also transforming it to be more fun. I mean, yeah, there's some changes on the other GBA tracks, especially on the DLC ones for Mario Kart 8 Wii U, but they're at least similar enough to be recognizable. But Sky Garden? There's like nothing that's similar aside from the theme in the first left turn. It has like nothing in common with the original Sky Garden. It just doesn't really well represent the track. I mean, look at my Minecraft remake that I made like a year or two ago. <clears throat> While I made some changes here and there, I stayed more faithful to the, to the original version enough to be recognizable. Now, this isn't a perfect remake by any means, and I definitely didn't expect them to design it exactly the same way. But come on now. This is... This would have been better in Mario Kart 8 than what we got. I even replaced this part here with what would have been a great glider section in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'm just 
I'm kind of disappointed that one of the best tracks in Mario Kart Super Circuit has been butchered to the point that it's unrecognizable. Like I said, it's a decent track, just a terrible remake. Now, I've never played this track in Mario Kart Tour, but I must say, Ninja Hideaway is probably the best track in the game now. Sure, it's a lot more complicated than most of the other tracks in the game, but it's, at, at least it's not like Yoshi Valley where one specific path is the fastest and basically have to go that way. You can go wherever you want and nobody and everyone else will not follow it there. I mean, some people will obviously, but for the most part, you can just choose your own path and it's basically the same as any other path in terms of um, speed. I mean, if you're doing time trial mode, it's probably the best path to take, but otherwise, it, it, it's pretty much the same no matter where you go. It does take a lot of practice to handle, especially in 200cc, but like Shroom Ridge, once you master it, it's a lot of fun. I do think the lack of two respawns are a bit, uh, let's just say that they don't really work as expected. But aside from that, this track is a lot of fun and I can't wait to play it online more. And there you have it, my opinions on each track in the first wave of the Booster Course Pass DLC. This is a different sort of video than I normally make, but since Mario Kart is my main game I play on this channel, I figured I would make this video to share those opinions. I will most likely make one of these videos every time a new wave comes out, but until then I will keep making my regular videos and montages. Please leave a comment and tell me what you thought about the video, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Until then, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.